This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof Wolf question sent in by our Patreon community. And in this case, the individual in question is Jao Gabriel. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Jao Gabriel asks uh, a very interesting question. Uh, he wants to know particularly what the relationship might be between venture capital on the one hand and worker co-ops or the worker co-ops in that kind of an economy that organizes production, not in the top-down manner of capitalist enterprises, a small group of people at the top, owners, boards of directors, what have you, uh, making all the basic decisions for however many dozens, hundreds, thousands of employees uh, that the company hires. The reason I like the question is because it shows an understanding of the separation between, between two things. On the one hand, where does the money come from? Where could it come from to start a business if the way businesses work is with worker co-ops? In other words, how would the provision of capital look like in a worker co-op economy as differentiated from a typical capitalist economy? Well, on the one hand, the answer is very simple. There's not much difference at all. Any business, whether it's run as a top-down, hierarchical, undemocratic capitalist economy, uh, firm or enterprise, uh, that kind of enterprise is different from a worker co-op, but they both need capital. Uh, it's typical in a capitalist environment. If you want to start a business, you either have to have the money in your own name that you own, which is quite rarely the case, or you have to get that money from a few people that work with you, a small group that start a company, or you borrow the money from a bank, or you issue shares of stock and hope that people will have enough belief in what you're doing to buy the shares and give you the money, and then that's the money you use to run your business. It's also possible to go to specialized firms who are in the business of giving money to people that are starting up a business called startups. These companies study your plans, study your, your program for how to build your business, and if they think you're doing well uh, in the idea you have, in the plans you have, they will provide you some of the money you need, or maybe even all of it. But they are tougher as donors of money than our banks. They will not usually allow you simply to take the money, make a promise to pay it back plus interest. They will demand usually that you give them a share of the ownership. So they become what we used to call the silent partner who's put up the money. You're the active partner who's making the business go, but you're relying in part or all on the money provided by the silent partner. And that's now called a venture capitalist. Pretty much the same idea. Well, you know, a worker co-op could work pretty much the same way. In other words, the worker co-op goes to the venture capitalist and says, here, we have a plan for a new business, and here we are, a group of 10, 20, 40, 60, whatever the number is that starts. Most businesses start relatively small, so that won't be a surprise to the venture capitalist at all. And you come in and you say, okay, give us money the way you do to a capitalist firm. At that point, the venture capitalist might say yes, probably won't. We'll say to you, yes, well, we'll do it, but we want 10% or 30% or 40% of the business. At that point, the worker co-op people, they put the brakes on. They say, wait a minute, we want the money. We will be glad to give you a share of the profits. We'll be glad to give you this, that, and the other. Promise, guarantee, but one thing we don't negotiate is that the people who make the decisions are the people who work here. One person, one vote. That's what worker co-op means. At that point, a venture capitalist might accept that he or she doesn't get the kind of ownership control that 
they were used to in the capitalist world. They might. Here's another way it might work. The worker co-ops, if there are many, could get a government program going, just the way capitalist enterprises in the history of capitalism got the kind of government program I'm about to describe going. Here's the program. The government will partner with the worker co-op. And if a venture capitalist is nervous about providing capital under some arrangement to the worker co-ops with some promise of sharing, perhaps, in the growth or the success or the profits they hope to achieve, these startup folks, but that since they won't accept that somebody who isn't a part of the enterprise has power over what happens there, the deal might be that the government guarantees the venture capitalists return. The government doesn't have to be there except if the worker co-op cannot meet whatever the other conditions are worked out with the venture capitalist, then the government would come in. To give you an example of how capitalists arrange that, in the depths of the Great Depression, here was a problem. The Great Depression had millions and millions of people out of work. Those people could not pay rent. Most people in those days were renters, not homeowners. So the government created the home loan business, the home loan agency, housing finance agency. And here's what it did. It said to the American banking system, when individuals come to you with a proposal to buy a house and ask you for a loan, we call those mortgage loans, to help you buy the house. You currently say no, because for you, that's too risky a loan. These are relatively poor people. Uh, they're gonna have to pay for many years. What happens if they get sick? What happens if they lose their job? What happens if other expenses overwhelm them? We're not ready to lend them. Okay, said the government, we understand. So here's what we're gonna do. We'll guarantee to you the loan you make to an American who uses it to buy a home. Of course, the banks were then willing to lend in a way they never had before because there was a government guarantee. Okay, fast forward. Perhaps venture capitalists will provide capital to worker co-ops if they had such a guarantee or something like it. In other words, you could have a venture capitalist operation if you wanted to provide capital that way to start up worker co-ops, it could be worked out if such arrangements were made. And of course, an alternative would be for the government itself to become the venture capitalist, to make careful decisions on what worker co-ops look promising and provide them with the capital, perhaps charging a small rate of return to replenish the supply of money that ever new worker uh, co-ops could borrow from. In other words, it's perfectly workable. It would have its own unique problems, but just like venture capitalists worked with capitalist enterprises, it could, with adjustments, work with worker co-ops. Thank you very much, Zhao, for your question. And to all of you in our very much appreciated Patreon community, this is Richard Wolf for Democracy at Work.